Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, and I am so excited today to start a new series called Boss Money Talks with the one and only Danielle Fambel. I am so excited. She's my special guest co-host today. Danielle, thank you. Now I called you Daniel. All right, we're taking that again. That's okay. Danielle. That's the problem because my husband has a, Dan- a friend, Daniel. Oh. And I hear it all the time. Okay, hang on. All right, so we'll do that again. Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome to the VO Boss Podcast. I'm your host, Ann Ganguza, and today I am so excited to start a new series called Boss Money Talks with the one and only Danielle Fambel. I am so excited, Danielle, to have you on the show today to talk about something so important to our businesses, and that's money. Hey, Welcome. Ann. Thank you so much for having me on. This is really exciting. Oh, I, I have to say, it is it is my honor to have you. And I when I interviewed you and bosses, if you didn't catch our last episode together, um, I was just blown away by your savviness uh, financially and, of course, voice actor and all that other good stuff. But it's very rare to find someone who really is all about the financial aspects of things and, and you're just right on top of everything. And I just was so excited to ask you to to create a series with me on this because I think it's really important for the success of any boss out there for their business. So kicking off the first episode, I thought maybe we should talk about uh, maybe forming your team because I recently spoke to my accountant and, you know, she she handles things for me and I absolutely love it. And I've said it so many times um, across many, many episodes, how important my accountant is to me. (laughs) And I thought, wow, we really need to like go over this again for any bosses that are out there really starting their own business, how important it is to get your finances in order. Um, what are your thoughts about, you know, do you have a team of people that work with you? I mean, I know you have background in finance, but do you have a team of people for your business? I do. And mm-hmm. I, I think it's really important to talk about having a team because as a solo entrepreneur, it's you want to do everything yourself and some things you could do yourself but it's just better to have um, an expert in that field and so you know for me i think i am the expert in the business in voiceover in um, what i do and so i want to bring in experts who are you know, good at what they do so they can help educate me on how I can run my business Mm. better. Because the main point of having a business is to create a profit, which is more money coming in than goes out. And if someone (laughs) can help you, exactly. That's like kind of the the basic, that's what we're doing here. And if you can have someone who can help you understand the profits and the business and what to do with the money and how to handle your taxes, um, all of that stuff, like having that team will help you grow (laughs) and scale your business. Yeah. And I think, I think also because, you know, accounting isn't something that I love to do. I mean, it's, I mean, that's like one of my biggest reasons for when I got my accountant was that I, I mean, I wasn't, I mean, not that I wasn't financially savvy, but it certainly wasn't my main focus. It wasn't, I didn't go to school for it. And so when I started my own business, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to keep track of all of these things. Like, you know, I'm spending money on equipment. I'm spending money on, uh, you know, coaching. I'm spending money on demos. And and I have to, God, I have to report this at the end of the year, right? And it just, I remember I didn't really have great record keeping in the first year. Now, granted, I was doing it part time, but still I had to, I had to account, right, for the money that I expensed and the money that came in, even though it wasn't a whole lot that first year, I wanted to make sure I was taking advantage of, you know, the fact that, you know, here I was, uh, you know, I, I, I gave up the corporate job and now all of a sudden I've got to account for things because at the end of the year, mm, uncle Sam is going to, you know, want to know what I've been doing. And it just, I, and when I, and when I waited too long to be very organized in my, (laughs) you know, in my expenses and accounting, I, at the end of the year, when I got ready for taxes, it was, it was hell. It was just pure hell. No (laughs) one wants that. Like, Oh, two or three months or two or three weeks I've been there of like just the worst possible aches in your stomach because you're like oh no in like March or April it's just 
Yeah. Horrible. It's like, oh, God, tax season. It's, yeah. Know, I got to do this. I got to do this. And and so, I, I, I mean, ultimately, like, it became where I was like, well, I, you know, I hate, like, and I was using, oh, gosh, back in the day, I was using QuickBooks, but on desktop. And so mm-hmm. it mm. was... Uh, it was there was is it QuickBooks yeah QuickBooks yeah um, and so it was like I want to talk about like 15 years ago and it just was like one of those things where like God I got to enter another transaction it was just one of those things that just became very tedious and I was like I really don't like this and ultimately I was very fortunate to have a recommendation for an accountant that could work with me and that first year because again it was so long ago uh, QuickBooks wasn't on it wasn't online or anything and as a matter of fact there was that mm-hmm. whole stigma of you don't want to do anything financial online because oh it's right. scary and your security and you know that right. kind of thing but you know how lucky are bosses in this day and age you know what i mean to kind of have that advantage that now things are so much more secure now you might say well is it really secure <laughs> but i have to say well, it's a whole lot more secure than it than it used to be or at least i was always comfortable i remember in the 90s paying uh, you know paying my bills um, online and I was one of the few people to do that I mean in the beginning I was just like look at some point you just have to you know you got to trust the you got to trust the technology at some point and and it's so much easier to pay things online and uh, when I got my accountant for my business here she it was like magic it was like she just said okay we would we would meet once a week and you know when she got to know my business and she got to know like what sort of things were expenses what sorts of things were you know um, income and especially important was separating those expenses so that it wasn't all I had one account I mean I think we explained weeks when we talked before um, in our past episode we talked about how important it was to have a business account talk talk to us a little bit again about business accounts and how bosses you know what's important about that what's The most important, especially when it comes to taxes, but really just for simplicity, is to be able to separate your personal life Mm -hmm. from your business life. Mm -hmm. Um, Your personal life hopefully is affected by your business life, as in your business pays you Mm -hmm. to do the job that you do for your business. But keeping them separate is going to be very helpful, um, especially when it comes to taxes, and it will be easier for your financial team as you build it to mm-hmm. be able to say okay this is tax this is business and this is personal here's how we keep them separate mm-hmm. there may be tax implications you may be able to write certain things off if it's business mm-hmm. whereas if it's personal you can't so it's helping you but it's also helping your team sure. keeping everything separate and I, it's like legally you you kind of have to i mean imagine if like any major corporation the ceo of that corporation is just like swiping their own personal credit or yeah. debit card like you just it's it's you've got to treat your business no matter the size or the scale of it the mm-hmm. way that other businesses are treated because they are taxed similarly yeah. um so this isn't necessarily just about business practices but for me with money all, all of it i think about is like come april 15th or come like the quarterly tax period how can I mm-hmm. set myself up for success now so I'm not feeling crunched and stressed for a couple of weeks during tax time when my CPA is probably not as available to yeah. me because they've got other people to work with. So it's it's keeping it separate will mm-hmm. help you with mm-hmm. bookkeeping. It will help you with like the way that you think about your business and personal, how you can pay certain bills on time. Just keep it two separate accounts, one for your personal and one in your business name. Sure. Now, now a question for you. Now, my, uh, I guess, I guess I would call her my bookkeeper. She also does my taxes. So I don't know if, if yours is one and the same, but what I found to be super helpful and convenient is that I literally just have her on retainer. She does everything for me. And what is wonderful is that, you know, now we use, you know, uh, QuickBooks online. And Mm -hmm. so literally we can have a meeting and the two of us can be, you know, on the phone um, talking, um, you know, on a weekly basis or whenever I need to meet with her um, regarding, okay, what is this? Is this a new category or is this an expense? And she pretty much knows my business because she's been, she's been doing this 
this for me for about 10 years. So she pretty much knows what's going on and it makes it so easy. I cannot tell you that this year at tax time and the last few years really have been like, oh yeah, hey, oh, it's April. Um, you know, what do you need from me for the taxes? Do you need anything specific? Because she also does our personal taxes as well as my business taxes. Mm -hmm. And so in reality, like we barely have to do anything except, you know, send her, you know, send her the paperwork that we get and uh, boom, she's done. I mean, and it's, it's so stress free and I, it's just, I don't ever have to worry. Uh, and, and, you know, she's got a good handle as to where I am. The other thing is that she's got a good handle as to where I am at any given point during the year. Like, how am I doing profit wise? Uh, you know, what are, you know, what's my, you know, how am I doing compared to last year? And she can generate reports. And so she can really keep me up to date on what's happening in my business. And then I can say, all right, maybe I need to um, cut back here or I need to invest more here. And so it's really so helpful. And for me, then, she is the one person, uh, I guess you would say, on my team that handles pretty much everything. But let's talk about uh, creating a team. What, wh who do you feel is necessary to have on a team um, to set yourself up for financial success in your business? I think this is a situation where you can expect to grow as you go. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I would say the first um, person to add into your financial team, your money team, is uh, a CPA or some mm -hmm. sort of accountant who is going to be helping you specifically when it comes to your taxes. Mm -hmm. But you made a really good point because you have an ongoing relationship yeah. with your accountant. And for me in the past, I would only go to my tax person when it was time to do my mm -hmm. taxes mm -hmm. once a year. But if you can plan to have an ongoing relationship, and I also have my accountant um, team on retainer, so they know mm -hmm. where I am throughout the course of the year. We have right. quarterly meetings where mm -hmm. they give me quarterly reports on where's the profit, where what is mm -hmm. my potential tax liability as of that time of the year, as of that quarter. Um, yeah. So yeah. having looking past just April 15th and saying, OK, this is a relationship that I'm going to have with a person ongoing. For me, I didn't realize that in the beginning, and that's something that I've more recently figured out. So I would say to bosses out there, make sure that the relationship that you have with your accountant is not a one once yeah. a year relationship. Mm -hmm. This needs to be an ongoing relationship throughout the course of the year because then they can help you with tax planning. And if you're yes, forecasting absolutely. for what's happening in the future, then you won't feel so shocked and I've been I've been there. Mm -hmm. You won't mm -hmm. feel so shocked, you know, when it's time to to write that check or maybe you get a refund. I mean, yeah, hallelujah absolutely. if you do. Absolutely. And you know what else too is that well, a lot of times I'm shocked by the state of California uh in taxes, but you know, that that's just a whole other issue. Um that has nothing to do with the, my lack of preparation for it. Um <laughs> but anyways, the other thing too depending on the type of business now I have, you know, uh if you have it, 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 a DBA or, you know, an LLC or an S Corp, which I do, um, my account also has, I also have to pay myself. And so I have to do that on a, on a regular basis. And so mm -hmm. she takes care of that as well for me. She took care of the registering of it. And anytime I get a, a letter from, you know, the IRS or from, and which happens a lot with this S Corp, yeah, um, it does. cause they're either, you know, keeping me up to date on, on the newest things that are happening, or maybe for whatever reason from two years ago, they always seem to find like you, Owe us a dollar thirty, and I'm like, really? Like, curious. You couldn't tell me that a, like a dollar thirty. Uh, hmm. And and the funny thing is, is that we've always like it's it's my accountant has always been so on top of it. She's like, no, actually, no, we paid that, and so she will take care of all of that for me. I'll just have to like you know scan the the paperwork that gets sent to me directly because my business is here at this address, and then I'll say, okay, what do I need to do? And she mm -hmm. literally will say, okay, here you need to you know we need to go to the IRS and we need to, you know, file this or do that. And it's more than just what you owe. It's, I'm just talking about all the paperwork that needs to be filed uh, for running an S-Corp, uh, you know, for me in the state, of the state of California. And as well as, you know, she she pays me so that, again, I'm not surprised at the end of the year. And as a matter of fact, you know, I have not been surprised, really. I, I've been surprised when I actually got more refund than I thought, which is great. Um, but I've never been like, oh, God, I have to pay, you know, money, which always makes my, my, my stomach 
twist in knots. Um, but th- that's been we because we've planned so well. And a lot of times she's up on the laws, right? Because that's what she does, right? This right. is why I'm like, why try to do it yourself? She's exactly. up on all the laws. And so she'll say, okay, so this year or now they've introduced something new where you can expense – you know, so much of your mileage or so much of your medical expenses. And so she's up on all those things. And that way we can take full advantage because who wants to pay more taxes if you don't have to? That's all exactly. I have to say. And it's, and it's not even just about taxes as well. You go back to mm-hmm. uh, what you're talking about being an S corp. Mm-hmm. I didn't know when it was the right time for me to be yeah, an S corp. Exactly. And so getting that information, I've, I've, I find if you can find in your accountant, your CPA, whomever you're working working with. Find someone who has um, the heart of a teacher. Dave Ramsey says that, oh, right? Yeah. And mm-hmm. like, ha- find somebody who can help educate you because I wasn't trying to work with someone who just, I handed things over right. oh, especially to them. your financial data. I mean, exactly. that is personal and sensitive, right? And it's got to be a, I think you have to have a special relationship with your accountant, to be honest. Yeah. And I, and personally, I'm curious because I'm, I, I love money and numbers yes. and talking mm-hmm. about this. And also I, I love my business. I love what I do. Mm-hmm. And profit is a huge part of my business, or yeah. at least yeah. the, even the income, the, the money that's coming in is a huge part of my business. So I want to understand it. Sure. I want someone who can teach me how to think about things, what I need to know going forward, what does that, that informs what decisions that I make, what sure. conferences am I going to budget for? Absolutely. How am I, you know, how am I paying myself? All of those things mm-hmm. as part of an education. So that person isn't just telling you what to do. You are working with them and then you can direct them with your business goals and ideas and right. they can help support you with what they know. Which so I love. That's a, mm-hmm. It's a huge part of, of mm-hmm. the money team. And for me, you said that your your accountant and bookkeeper are one and the same. Mine are two completely separate people. Oh, okay, okay. So mm-hmm. yep, that the, makes sense. A, the accountant does just the taxes and tax planning, which we have our quarterly meeting. And then the bookkeeper is a completely separate person mm-hmm. who does work that makes sense. at the the accountant's office and they do you know my monthly profit and loss reports mm-hmm. and send that to me um any like day to day they have access to my quickbooks so they're seeing sure yeah you know everything that that i'm seeing basically so they're kind of a different point of contact and i appreciate the separation because my bookkeeper is an expert in the bookkeeping aspect. So yeah. if I have questions, mm-hmm. I go to that person. If I have questions about taxes, I go to this person. Sure. It, I like that separation, yeah. but it doesn't have to be that yeah, way. No, and I agree. My, I feel like mine is a very unique case, you know, because she did our taxes before, but, you know, it, it, I, she always did our taxes first. And I didn't have her as my on, you know, ongoing, you know, uh, uh, you know, accountant for forever. I used to just go to her once a year. And then mm-hmm. I realized we, we developed a relationship and I, and I realized I was like, God, I hate entering, you know, I hate having to do this every month. She goes, well, I can do it for you. And I was like, Oh yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I, I think also what's wonderful is, isn't it nice that, you know, now we have things that like, especially in our, in our business, our income comes in electronically and yep. that can be filtered right into. So I don't have to manually like, Oh, I wrote a check. I don't have to manually enter it into QuickBooks. Like I had to do 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Right. Oh, I have a checkbook. Who writes checks anymore? I mean, I still have a checkbook and I do have to write checks every once in a while. Um, but I mean, gosh, it's so nice that if I get, you know, a client payment that comes in via PayPal and, and I think this should be a, it could be a whole separate other, you know, episode was what are your methods of payment? Because you got to make it easy. Right. And right. what's important to know about that, but PayPal, Stripe, uh, you know, Wix backend payments, um, QuickBooks allows QuickBooks payments, QuickBooks allows There's, payments, uh, right? So I have lots Direct of deposit. different banks, right? These are considered banks, right? PayPal's considered a bank, Stripe's mm-hmm. considered a bank. And so the fact that, that QuickBooks can integrate these in automatically, it doesn't do it perfectly, but the fact is, is if I get something that comes into my PayPal, it can also, it simultaneously, it, it is fused into my QuickBooks, uh, online QuickBooks account, which is nice. So I don't have to enter things in. And, and again, like I don't, but she does, and she'll make sure 
that it's categorized properly because sometimes it tries to automatically categorize and it doesn't work right. But she's on top of the categories and making sure that, you know, then I know, oh, gosh, I'm spending a whole lot of money on subscriptions or, you know, whatever that is. But how lucky are we that things are electronic in a lot of ways yeah. because the manual method was tedious. It's super tedious. And imagine yeah. throwing into that your someone pays you personally instead of paying your business. Yeah. How much that like throws a oh, wrench in, in the whole everything. bookkeeping plans and everything else, which mm-hmm. is why it's important to start with the separation of business and personal accounts so that you're not needing to it's 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 an it's enough, you know, yeah. just the bookkeeping itself for your business is enough. Then adding in additional, you know, things to have to add sure. and subtract and forgot that I have this this card. I use my credit card for everything, personal yeah. business. It makes it really yeah. difficult down the line, especially as you grow your business. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's great to have everything electronically. It's great to be able to be paid in multiple different bank accounts or yeah. different accounts. Um but keeping it all still under the under the umbrella of your business, separate from you mm-hmm. personally, mm-hmm. is really, I would say, like the the baseline. And and I think the simpler the better. Like I, but then again, you know, for me and anybody that knows me, I have multiple multiple departments of my business or multiple businesses, really. Sure. You know, I, I'm not just Ann Gangu's, I'm not just VO Boss. Um, that's one of my brands. And then I'm also Ann Gangu's of Voice Productions. And I'm also, you know, VO Peeps. And so I've got really kind of three different st- streams of business that come in and uh, you know of course I'm always looking for more streams of income and so you know I think if you can keep it simple uh, in terms of you know what what streams of income I I'll take income at any any way you can throw it at me but Mm -hmm. you know for my accountant I've got to make sure that it's organized and easy so the more that I diversify my business and again I'm thinking of diversifying yet again for another brand just because you know I I like to keep it I like to keep it interesting uh you know so I've got another brand coming up but you know that's that I'll discuss that later uh and so I I want to try to make it as simple as possible for my accountant uh but yet still allow clients to pay me in a in a number of different ways. I will make mention that I had uh, my one business account, which I had to actually, um, I actually had to change over to a new business account. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because I changed my name. I originally was a DBA under Ann Speak. And then I decided when I went and I created the S Corp, I became Ann Gangu's of Voice Production. Just changed the name, changed the name. But because I did that, right, uh, my all of a sudden it became like it became like a thing with my bank that said, hey, we don't have you under this Ann Speak name or we're, who's this Ann Gangu's of Voice Production. So because I didn't have the two registered at once, I didn't go back and DBA you know, and add it in. Uh, they then said my business account was not valid under the name and speak anymore. And I couldn't, you know, so I had to open up a new bank. I had to open up a new business account. And so it amazed me just how tied in that one business account was to everything that I did yep. to my PayPal, to my Stripe, to, you know, uh, my website here, pay me everything would go on my Venmo, all my, you know, all my bank of America was tied into that account or my, my, cards, my debit cards were all tied into that one business account and transitioning it over became like, oof, you know, that is, that's an event. As a matter of fact, I still haven't completely transitioned over and completely closed the old account. So I still have money coming into two accounts. So now it's even more important that I have a team uh, or I have, you know, people really watching both accounts. Oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I mean, there, it's, it's being treated that your new business is being treated as a new business, yeah. even though it's not, it's the same business under a different name. Yeah. But that kind of tells you why it's so important to keep, to Ooh, really start yeah. and plan it, um, mm-hmm. to, to create almost the foundation for how you're going to be separating your accounts, the names, the, how you're getting paid, how, what, what's being paid in taxes, who's going to be your team to, mm-hmm. to oversee mm-hmm. all of that, really setting up the structural foundation of how your financial, the financial components of your business, how that's run is really important. The unfortunate thing is it really is tedious and time consuming 
when you're in the process that you're in, but you only have to do it once. Yeah, and exactly. you learn the process so that you know what to do uh, in the future. I, I uh, just recently purchased a, a rental house in my, my home state of Texas, and I was speaking to my accountant about, like, I've never done this before, what do I do? And she said, oh, well, you just treat it like you treat your other business. And for me, having the, um, Having the experience of doing this with my business, my voiceover business, mm -hmm. has actually taught me what I can do to copy paste yeah, the principle, right? mm -hmm. the idea. So Love once that. you get this, once you understand how you're working your business and creating the structure for your business and the team that you need to help you, you can actually take that knowledge and just copy and paste it to the, whatever mm -hmm. the next thing or the next industry is, which is really yeah. pretty great. I love that. So, all right. So in addition to, let's say, your bookkeeper and your accountant that does taxes, is there any other member of your team or anything else that you can recommend for bosses? And I guess the, also I'm sure the bosses are like, oh, my God, I can, I'm not even making money at, at voiceover. How am I going to afford, right? We, I want to address that as well. Right. So – like I said, this is a grow as you go situation. Yeah. I did not start by having a CPA mm -hmm. and a bookkeeper and, you know, the other members of my team, which I'll, I'll talk about in a second. So I would say start with what what do you need in the moment? Mm -hmm. If what you need in the moment is a, an accountant, which I would say everybody's got to pay taxes. So I would yeah. start there yeah. is having an accountant. Maybe it's not somebody that you have on retainer, but it is someone that you can maybe check in with once or twice a year um, outside of tax time so that you can make sure that you are educated on what you need to be doing to prepare yourself for tax time. I would start there if you can. Mm -hmm. And then if you can grow to having that person be more of a, you know, a person that you work with on an ongoing basis, mm -hmm. that will definitely help you as you grow. Bookkeeping is something that I think you should understand how to do on your oh, own. I agree. I think you should um, educate yourself first. You should definitely mm -hmm. educate yourself, but eventually it's something that you might want to hand over, um, you know, outsource to someone else. Yeah. For me, my metric is do I like doing it? Am I good at doing it? Mm. If the answer to both of those things is no, yeah. I will find someone I like who that. It, that is their gift. And, and and find someone, you know, I think, again, it's it's one of those, It's you know, shop around. I mean, this is, yeah. it's got to be somebody you trust. Again, you know, your financial, your financial, you know, life is, I think, very personal and, and people, you know, are very like, you know, they want to be very secure about it. So it does take a special like relationship, I think, with a person that you trust with your, your numbers. And, and you your might need account. to, yeah, shop around. You might yeah. need to work with multiple people. I mean, yeah. I, this is mm -hmm. the CPA that I'm with now is not the CPA I was with two years ago. Mm -hmm. And so this is still a relatively new -er relationship that mm -hmm. she and I, that we're cultivating with, mm -hmm. even with this bookkeeper. So there's a lot, there's a lot to learn, but you need to learn about it from a person who, like I said, has that heart of a teacher who wants to help sure, educate sure. you. Um, so that's, that's how I would, I would take it and that's actually what I did was at first I was working with someone who was just doing taxes and it was up to me and I was clearly not up for the job of bookkeeping which is why I had those three weeks of panic yep. uh, <laughs> in late March yep. early April yep. um, but but you can grow as as you go and and find the people who can help educate you mm -hmm. now um, I also have I think we talked about this in our past episode, but I have an assistant who, for the day-to-day -day applications in my business, making sure invoices are um, sent, mm -hmm. making sure they are paid, making sure they're marked as paid, not only in QuickBooks, which you know she and I do together, but also making sure that um, there are no outstanding invoices. Like sure. that kind of day-to-day -day thing. Some people have a bookkeeper do it. I have... I do it with my assistant mm -hmm. um, and to give her credit she's really the one who's like more on that day-to-day -day in mm -hmm. terms of like data entry and things like that obviously it's something that um, not every VO boss is going to have an assistant at whatever stage in, in their business it's ta it took me a while to get to that point but I have found it helpful because then it's like one less thing that I'm doing in terms of the day-to-day -to -day touch points um, and then finally, I work with a financial advisor because mm -hmm. I wanted to work with someone who could help me understand 
finances, my finances as a whole, yes, as a business absolutely. owner and personally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what's great is that I will have quarterly meetings with the financial advisor, the bookkeeper, the CPA, and myself. Mm-hmm. We are all on a big like money call quarterly. Mm-hmm. And I have mm-hmm. monthly meetings Love with that. my financial advisor about my personal goals with money mm-hmm. um, and also, you know, with the business and, and she can give me feedback. Like one of the things she, she said to me was, Hey, if you're, if you don't understand something in these meetings, I would love to see you, um, show a little bit more courage and, and ask if you mm-hmm. don't understand, mm-hmm. because sure. while I say, yeah, they have the heart of a teacher, sometimes I don't even know what to ask. And so I just, mm-hmm. I, it's, it's totally normal, you especially if go, you're not. Okay. Yeah, if uh-huh. yeah, sometimes uh-huh. you're just like, yeah, no, okay, I get yeah, it. I get uh-huh. it. Uh huh. And I'm like, I have no idea. I have no idea where they're going. Yeah, with it. Mm-hmm. but it's totally okay, mm-hmm. even as the boss, the VO boss, to not understand, and yes. that's why you're relying on these people. Absolutely. But really, truly, like lean into your curiosity and and mm-hmm. understand because these people that you're working with, like I said, the ones I'm working with now. I wasn't working with two years ago, you may work with a new team at some point. And so you want to go in with a level of armed with the knowledge um, about how your business is run and what your goals are for your business so that you can direct your team instead of them telling you what to do because you are the boss. Absolutely. And what a, what a wonderful note (laughs) to to actually, to end on. Yeah. You are the boss. And so, yeah, you need to educate yourself um, so that you can direct these people with your financial, you know, your financial aspect of your business, which is so very important. And so very, you know, I, I think, you know, close to, to, our hearts um, as we try to, you know, as we as we run our successful businesses. So I, exactly. I, I manifest that. Um, Danielle, uh, thank you so much. I, I could go on and on and on. now I just thought like a hundred other questions, which I'm going to I'm going to ask you in, in our next episodes. But bosses, stay tuned for this brand new series called Boss Money Talks with Danielle Fanville. I am so, so happy you were here today. Danielle, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and knowledge. Bosses, I'm giving a great big shout out uh, to our sponsor, IPDTL. You too can connect and network like bosses. Find out more at IPDTL.com. All right, have an amazing week and we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks, y'all.